Hello y'all, this is Kaiser Redux, an expansion for the Kaiser Reich mod for Hearts of Iron 4. It emphasizes fun and interesting scenarios over realism and grounded lore. In the country selection screen, let's go with the United States of America, who at the time of the start of the mod is dealing with political instability. It doesn't really matter what focuses we do, but what does matter is the election in November 1936. This event explains the USA's current situation and some history of the last few years, such as Woodrow Wilson winning a third term and the rise of the Socialist Party party of America and the Share to Wealth Society. Electoral gridlock in France and Black Monday hits America, which is not good for our finances. Socialist revolution in Cuba, what do we do? Well, let's prepare to intervene. Reasserting control over Cuba, two options here, but let's go with the first one, give clandestine support to dissidents. Radicalization is increasing in the country. More and more Americans feel alienated from the mainstream parties and are thus joining populist alternatives. Presidential election of 1936, lots of choices here, but it doesn't really Really matter who we pick, so let's go with the socialist choice, Bill Haywood. William Haywood, known as Big Bill, leads the USA now, and with him in charge, the ruling party ideology has become syndicalist. Ernest Gruning makes a speech in favor of Alaskan statehood. His speech falls on deaf ears, and the event reads, Sorry, Alaska, we have bigger things to deal with. A new hope for Alaska, be loyal to America, or go independent. Let's go with the latter by clicking on what has America ever done for us. One more event about Alaska going independent. We will select north to Alaska, switching our country from the United States of America to Alaska, who we will play as from this point forward. We're on our own, so let's look at our national spirits, beginning with the Alaskan Senegate, Alaska, the last frontier, and lastly, American refugees. We'll start the focus tree with Alaska, the last frontier, and at some point in time, eventually start dealing with the buyout, which is just below Alaska, the last frontier, once the Senegate buyout has begun. Nice, a big super event about Alaska leaving the Union. This is truly a new dawn for the last frontier. Our new state must be aware of the two countries vying for influence over Alaska, those countries being Canada and Japan. The contiguous portion of the United States has descended into civil war and chaos, perhaps is a good thing we left when we did. While we wait for the buyout to occur, let's create an armed force, then go to the right branch and start the Alaskan Navy, then below that commission a fleet. The great buyout is here and it is massive with two barons purchasing one fourth of Alaska's available land. To many, this is as bad as buying the entire state and everyone agrees if this deal goes through, the barons and the syndicate would have almost uncontested control over the country. We must act and deal with the barons. Let's take the second choice where we will refund the barons money for land that was obtained illegally while letting everything else go through unhindered. Workers take to the streets in the city of Juneau to start a strike. Things begin to get violent so let's have them and their leader arrested. Now for something that isn't focused on state politics, a fishing contest is held. Things generally go well for everyone who is there. Let's get ourselves a fleet for Alaska. We can buy one from either Canada or Japan, let's go with the Japanese. We managed to survive the buyout and a violent strike. Let's move on from that and have our first election. Let's aim to have a corporate victory, which means we need the market liberals to win. The State Fair of 1937 is held. This one wasn't canceled because unlike the contiguous United States, we aren't in a civil war. The election of 1937 arrives. Let's pick the third candidate at the bottom who is representing the Alaska Corporate Party. Atlas shrugged. A woman arrives to the country with some interesting ideas on economics and society with our C Seats won in the recent elections. Let's put Eliza Rosenbaum into power, better known as Ayn Rand. What once was hope for a utopian future has turned into disaster. Rand's brilliant plan fails miserably. A unifying figure stands against Rand, and that person is Elwood Towner, who with an army at his command seeks to outs the current leader, whose days are numbered at this point. Rand's folly is completed. Going to the focus tree, we'll start a new political path beginning with Beringia Rises, then continue with Red Cloud's grand scheme, and after that, Reservation tensions. Beringia has risen. The national populace will become the ruling party ideology with Towner as the leader. We lose some national spirits and get some new commanders for the military. The master plan. Things are getting bad for non-Native Americans. Other than that, we get some new units and the names of some places are renamed and translated to local native language names. We got 12 divisions of warrior societies, all of them being veterans. And one thing to note, this army is led by Commander Joe Medicine Crow. Chief Elwood Red Cloud Towner makes a speech to a massive crowd while a mid-speech an assassin takes their shot and it lands home. Towner can live or die
die from this encounter, let's go with the latter option so his successor will secure power and take his place. Joseph, Medicine Crow, uses the opportunity to become the new leader of the country. He is a member of the Crow people. He fled the fires of the Second American Civil War and came to Alaska, integrating himself into Red Cloud's administration, proving himself as a brilliant scholar and historian, as well as gaining the reputation of a fierce warrior. Joe, Medicine Crow, historically was a war chief historian and author of the Crow Nation of Native Americans. He became a war chief in World War II by completing all four tasks required of the role and in 2009 will be rewarded with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In the mod, he is politically a totalist, but from what information I could find, he had no political affiliation anywhere and there is a good chance that he may be replaced in a future version with someone else becoming the totalist leader. Native American totalism, Chief Joe Medicine Crow cares not ultimately for ideology or theory, but for his people. He embraced totalism to gather support from the leftist powers of the world. This event gives us political power and a very good national spirit. I just now noticed this, but besides the new flag we got, the country name has changed to Mikinagwaju, which means Turtle Island in multiple different languages. Turtle Island itself is a name used by some Native Americans to refer to North America or the entire world. The Crow Warrior Bands, various paramilitary groups are made into official arms of the state. We get a national spirit named Warrior Bands, which is really strong. We'll come back and do Native American International later. Let's move on to some relatively violent named focuses, those being Scout the Mall and Two to Killing Fields. More information about the Killing Fields, oh no. To deal with a soil fertility crisis caused by an influx of farmers, the government had a brilliant solution. So brilliant, in fact, they tried to hide it at all cost. Well, the secret was founded by one family who discovered body parts in the ground. The marks of a true warrior scalping has apparently become part of the initiation into manhood, which a Canadian soldier found out too late. This event gives us political power and an okay national spirit. To the south, the Second American Civil War rages on. It looks like the Pacific States of America may be the victor unless someone intervenes, with one faction dying, another one clinging on, and the other two seem to be stuck in a stalemate. While five factions fight for dominance, New England is just spectating. The Great Raid, wow, this focus of has a lot of effects. We get war goals and cores, it seems, on all of North America. That's amazing. We're striking at the Kingdom of Canada and the Entente first because they're right next to us and the faction is occupied fighting somewhere in India. The Great Raid event, I think, also may have spawned a large army made up of hordes and warrior bands that are all veteran level and gave us 78 in total. We also now have something called the Great Canoe Fleet. I'd like to see the enemy's face when they find out we have canoes that shoot torpedoes. It will blow their mind and their ship away. If we move quickly enough, we should be able to secure some Canadian territory before they get back to fight us. The first country to lose the Second American Civil War is the American Union State. The chief holds a meeting in what was once Juneau to meet with fellow totalist natives from across the Americas. This event gives us political power. To bolster our army, the Alaskan Territory Guard focus was completed, giving us four divisions of the aforementioned Territory Guard. Canadian soldiers respond to our advance to the east and they're also trying to land naval invasions on us. And and ideal paradise, we get political power and the national spirit Turtle Island freed, giving our divisions more organization and attack. We pushed through Canada, took Montreal, and Toronto will fall to us next. We got a fight through New England too, which just so happens to be led by H.P. Lovecraft in this playthrough. The Entente is moving to reclaim Europe. That's pretty awkward because the Kingdom of Canada has just capitulated. The peace conference is here. We're just going to take all of Canada and New England is just going to be part of Turtle Island from now on. The sacking of a city upon a hill. Cities in New England are renamed to local Native American language translations. With another event, cities in in Canada get the same treatment as the ones in New England with the renames and such. With our conflicts over with for now and the one in the USA still going on, we're going to get set up and strike soon. New York City falls somewhat fast, but in the west on what was the Canadian-American border, things are going a little bit slower. Detroit falls, we're driving the CSA back when we need to get Chicago in order to ensure victory. The USA federal government has collapsed and we just sort of observed while at the peace conference. We got nothing, but that's fine. The combined syndicates of America are the next to fall. The Constitutional American Republic and the Pacific States are the last two Civil War factions remaining. Sacramento is ours and soon all of California and the West Coast shall be as well. The Constitutional American Republic won the Second American Civil War. Or did they? No, they did not. Our next targets for attack are the United Mexican States and Cuba, who is a part of the Third International, but at this point that's a bear I don't mind poking. Cuba is defeated, it would be a useful launching pad to take out Haiti, 
and the neighboring Dominican Republic. An ideal paradise, a lot of cities in the former USA are renamed to local Native American translations. We're using naval invasions on Panama, and the bad news is we want to get Costa Rica too, but they're guaranteed by the German Empire. Turtle Island soldiers land in North Africa to fight the French, who we are still at war with due to them being a member of the Entente. Using military access from the Reich's Pact, we successfully land troops in Bryn to battle the key Third International member. To crush the Entente once and for all, we are visiting the Austerasian Confederation who is the last remaining major faction member. Bad news for the Occupied Reichspakt, the German-Japanese War has begun. Using Great Britain, we land armies in the Commune of France with the goal of beating the Internationale. We justified a war goal on the German Empire, so we're going to attack them. The reason we're doing this is because we don't want Costa Rica to join the Reichspakt if we attack them. Big, massive naval battle, Turtle Island and Russia versus the Germans and Austrians. One thing not going in our favor is that I really didn't bother to upgrade the ship, so I'm relying on quantity, and that may have affected the losses a little bit. We're driving ourselves into Belgium and the German Empire, and soon we'll be going into the Austrian Empire. Ignore the France and Brittany. That's one part of the war over with. The Russians are essentially getting a lot of Eastern Europe while we secure our control in France. The German Empire is no longer around to protect Costa Rica, so they're vulnerable to our assault. First, the German Empire went, now it's the Austrian one. We get a great deal of their land in the peace conference, grabbing more of Europe on top of the completely controlled North America. The last vestige of German hegemony lies in China. Divisions have been sent there to put an end to it. The AOG is annexed, taking a look at all the land the indigenous peoples of North America control. It's a lot, including the continent itself, parts of Europe, Australia, and cities in China. The video is going to stop here. If you enjoyed the mod, make sure to check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Have an awesome day. I'll see y'all later. Bye.